Hey guys, so today you are getting voice over Adelaida. I wanted to do a video on how I do an applique of our top selling design on our Recoma MT1501. Um, I'm going to be showing you guys a very detailed um, video on how exactly it is I do this design. And so let's get started. I wanted to first talk about this table. So this table is not a Recoma brand table, but it's a table that I actually purchased on Amazon. As you can see, my mom and I's craft room is very small. So this table allows us to have a space where we can cut large pieces of fabric. Uh, my mom, it helps my mom cut tool and I can put all of my supplies all spread out. I can have the next shirt ready to go and it just allows us a lot of space to work so today I am not going to be using the extension but one fun thing is that you can put the table right under the arm of the machine which actually helps you have stuff nearby and it does not affect the machine at all and I actually got this table on Amazon for about $150 I believe I will leave the link down below of this table but it has really 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 helped my mom and I out. We would have things laying around really far away and when using a machine like this it just helps to have everything really close by so that you can get the orders out faster. So definitely recommend this table. It fits perfectly under this machine so if you have a Recoma definitely recommend this table because it fits perfectly under it and you can put all of your stuff nearby the machine like your scissors your fabrics so i'm going to be showing you guys the hoops that i the main hoops that i use the recoma comes with a lot a lot of hoops but i mainly use the seven inch round one and the 11 inch square so i it comes with two of each and i use all four i like to pre-hoop all of my shirts as you can see i already have one shirt hooped and i am going to show you how it is that i hoop the shirt so you take that one piece you put it inside of the shirt and make sure that it's perfectly center. I like to use my fingers to center it and also the mat underneath. And then I take the other piece and you want to make sure that that little loop, that little upside down C that I'm showing you there is to your right facing up and then you can hoop the shirt. You want to make sure that when you put that piece it's perfectly center. I like to use my mat for that and this is what it should look like. And again remember the C facing up to the right and that is how you insert it into the machine. And you want to push until it clicks and you want to push down at the bottom of the shirt because these are smaller kids shirts you want to make sure that the shirt doesn't get caught under the arm so now you want to take your USB you can use any USB I use the USB that came with the Recoma machine but you can use any USB you want to make sure that the design that you're uploading into the machine is a DST file type I purchase my embroidery designs off of Etsy a lot of the times or Google and you want to make sure that the download that you're purchasing includes a DST file type and that is what you're going to be putting in that USB, the DST file type of that design to put into the USB to then put into the machine's memory. And then you want to unlock the machine which is that button that I'm pressing there. You want to click OK and now you have the machine unlocked. You want to click file and then you want to click that USB symbol there at the bottom left and look for the design that you need. Now you're going to click that embroidery machine icon with the arrow and you can leave it highlighted. You can leave that file highlighted and then click OK. And what that did basically is it moved that design from the USB into the embroidery machine's memory. So now you can remove the USB 
and then you can go into the machine's memory which is that embroidery icon there right next to the USB you want to click the design that you want to make and you want to click OK so now you're gonna click design set and you're going to click that bottom left button where it shows a little hoop with a hat inside and that's going to show you all of the different hoops that the machine um, uses and the machine actually comes with like two of each of these hoops i believe it doesn't come with that bottom one um, but it comes with two of each of most of those hoops and i'm going to be using the hoop type d today which is the one that i'm going to choose right now and I'm going to click OK. And when you click OK, it's going to, as you can see, it's going to center the design into that little hoop. You can sort of see the outline of the hoop around the design there. And what we're going to do is bring the design up higher so that it's closer to the neckline of the shirt. So you're gonna click escape and you're gonna get out of there. So by clicking the bottom button, it brings up the design. And by clicking the top button, it brings down the design. And I don't know if you can see there, but there are two arrows right in the middle. If you would touch that button there, it would change it to one little arrow, which will make it go up slower. Right now I have it in a faster setting because I'm used to it, but those two arrows basically means that it'll move faster. So I'm just going to bring it up a little bit and right there is perfect. And now I am going to trace the design. You want to trace the design because you want to make sure that the design is perfectly placed where you want. And when you trace, it'll look something like this. And because the hoop is so small, sometimes when it traces, the hoop will hit the little bobbin. There's like a little bobbin casing at the bottom that kind of rises a little bit. So the hoop will sometimes like hit it while it's tracing and you just want to make sure that it doesn't move the hoop out of place you just want to make sure that's what that's what you saw me do there where i pushed it back in just in case it didn't move it but just in case so now we're going to set the steps so basically what this means is each little cone of thread is in a particular number which means it's in a particular needle so now we are going to the numbers that you see there which are the one two three four five six seven are the numbers of what the color cones are every number means a particular color which also means a particular needle so the number one basically means cone number one which is where you have a particular color which if the first step requires a teal color then you want to click the number where the teal color is and then the machine will move the needle to where the teal color is depending on the number that the cone um, lands on. So when you're doing an applique, the first steps are always tracing the design because you want to apply the fabric. So you don't start embroidering right away. So all of the first steps are applying the applique fabrics and cutting them so that then the machine is able to embroider all of the design. So I usually do all of those tracing steps in the same color. So you're going to see that I'm just going to click the number one a bunch of times because those are the number of steps where it just traces the design so that I can cut the fabric. And you can see where these steps are when you purchase a design from Etsy. It'll come with a file which will tell you each step that goes into the design. And you can just print that paper out and have it next to you when you're inputting these steps. So now that I put all of the steps for just the tracing so I'm able to lay the fabric down and cut it, one very important step in this process is that you click that button that says F over there in the upper right corner for every single step that requires you to lay the fabric down, have it trace it, and then have to cut it. Because if you don't do this, the machine will keep going and it won't stop so that you're able to lay the fabric down and it won't stop so that you're able to cut it. So for each step, you want to click that F because basically what it's going to do is once it finishes that very first step, it's going to stop 
and it's gonna push the hoop out so that you're able to take it out and put the fabric and then you're gonna put it in, you're gonna click start and then it's gonna retrace the fabric over top and then it's gonna stop again on that next step because you have the F on every single step. So you're gonna see I'm gonna put the F on every single step and it's not necessary to put the F so once you have all the fabric laid down, you don't need the machine to stop. So on all of the steps where it's just embroidering, don't put the F on it. It's not necessary. You just need the F for the, for the parts where you're putting fabric down and you're cutting it out. And I also wanted to mention, do not get confused with the numbers that are to the right where you see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 until 15 with a, with a color underneath. Those are the colors of the cones on the needle, on the needles. The actual step counts are in the little squares. So each of those little squares means a step. So for example, when you download a file or a design, if the design only has 12 steps, it will only let you fill 12 squares. So each little square basically means a step. So don't get confused with the numbers, that the numbers mean the steps. No, the numbers just mean what, uh, where the cone is on the actual machine. If it's on the needle number one, if it's on needle number two. So for example, the one that I'm clicking here is the purple thread. And it's on needle number one. So that's why you see me click one a bunch of times because the very first time it embroiders, it starts embroidering in purple. So I just click the number one for everything. And then the next step would be the next color. So I wanted to show you here what the cones look like on the machine. So basically the purple cone at the very first cone at the bottom left of the machine is cone number one. The next cone is cone number two. The last cone is cone number three, and then it starts back up in the front as cone number four, then cone number five, and so on and so on. So I wanted to show you here what the steps look like with all of the Fs, and the last couple of numbers do not have Fs because they don't need it because those are just embroidering and finishing up the design. And I also wanted to talk about the stabilizer that I use. The stabilizer that I use is actually a cutaway stabilizer that I actually use as tearaway stabilizer. Um, and it's thick enough where it's actually thick enough where the design comes out better, but it's not too thick where it's it looks very lumpy behind the shirt. And it's not a tearaway where it's too thin that the design comes out wrinkly. I think it's the perfect medium weight stabilizer and it tears perfectly. It does say cut away when you purchase it, but I tear it and I never, never, never have issues and it tears super easily. I have it in the description box down below. I get it off Amazon and it's not that expensive and it comes in a big roll and I always pre-cut all of the slices to save on a stabilizer. Um, because if you buy the pre-cut ones, sometimes they're too big and you're just wasting stabilizer. So definitely recommend this stabilizer. And another thing is I don't hoop the stabilizer with the shirt. I find that it makes it difficult and you're just leaving room for the hoop to come out crooked. So I like to hoop the shirt like normal and then I just place the stabilizer underneath like so. So then you want to click start. Uh, one thing I see that I did not show, but that you want to make sure, is that the machine is relocked before you click start. So if you don't relock the machine, it won't let you click start. So if you see that that little lock on the top right is open, like where it looks like an actual open lock, then you want to click that button to lock the machine and then you can start. And once you click start, remember that very first step that you did is just going to trace the very first step so that you're able to lay down the fabric so the reason that the very first step of just tracing is important is because you want to know where to place the fabric if you don't do this step then you don't really know where to place the fabric. so once it outlines the number one you're able to lay the fabric down and my mom and i always have pre-cut pieces of fabric with heat and bond already on there that fit the designs perfectly. 
as you can see has heat and bond i also have a link down below of the heat and bond that i use i have a link down below for everything that i use for anything that you guys um, would be interested in in this video and it's basically going to look shiny like that it's going to have a shiny texture you want to make sure that you take the heat and bond off when it's cool and not warm and i love to use 505 spray to set the fabric down the reason that i like to do this is because sometimes because this is such an industrial machine the sh vibrating of the machine will make the fabric move and it'll make it bubble and it it will just create a little bit of a nightmare so i like to spray just a little bit of um, a temporary just a little bit of temporary adhesive spray to lay the fabric down so that it's completely flat so that it's completely flat so that when it restitches the number one or the number or the de applique design that you're doing it's seamless and it's completely flat so that when you iron it so that when you heat press it at the end you don't have any bubbles or any lumps or anything or any wrinkles because the fabric bubbled so now it's going to re-outline that number and then again it's going to stop and bring the arms out because we press that f letter in this particular step it's going to bring it out so that you're, it stops um, so it stops at this step so that you're able to bring out the hoop and cut the design and then put it back in and these are the scissors that I use. The scissors that I use are the Fiskars curved scissors. Please make sure that you're using curved scissors when doing appliques because you might rip holes into your shirt if you don't. I learned my lesson. So this is what it looks like when you cut the fabric off and then you're going to put it in so that it moves to the next step. And now it's going to trace out the horn of the unicorn. And I wanted to show you guys that my mom and I always have all of the little fabrics pre-cut. This is our top selling shirt so we have all of the little pieces um, pre-cut for the shirt so that when we're making the shirts we can just place the little piece on and we don't have to worry about cutting the pieces or putting heat and bond on them so as you can see all of the little pieces are there for this particular shirt and they all have heat and bond on there so that all we have to do is place it and press start again it just really helps to save time this is what all the little pieces look like before embroidery you can see that all of the little fabrics are cut and ready to go and now it's going to embroider the design and in this step it's not going to stop after it finishes embroidering the number one it's going to keep going because for this step we don't need that letter f And then I also wanted to quickly talk about tension on this machine. So the one thing that I love about this machine is that it has different ways where you can adjust the tension. And one of my favorite ways is this little bar that you see right here. And you can have and you can move it up to tighten the tension or you can move it down to loosen the tension. So I always have it sort of in the middle. But depending on the design that you're doing, this is a really good way to kind of adjust the tension quicker than having to press the little knobs. So before you touch those little knobs, try the bar out first and then see if that helps. And then I just kind of wanted to show you um, the bobbin casing ran out coincidentally. So I wanted to show you really quickly how it is that I change out the bobbin thread. And basically you wanna make sure that the bobbin thread is facing a backwards P like so 
And when you're going to insert it into the bobbin casing, there's a little pigtail at the top and you want to make sure that that little pigtail is facing up. You want to put the backwards P bobbin into the bobbin casing. You're going to push it through here and then you're going to loop it around the pigtail twice. And you know you did a good job because when you pull on the bobbin casing, I mean, sorry, when you pull on the thread, it moves seamlessly. And then you're going to insert it into the machine and you want to make sure that you insert it and you want to hear a click when you insert it. That's how you know you inserted it correctly. And then once the design is done, obviously once you finish doing cutting all of the fabrics, you can let the machine do its thing and do other things and let it embroider by itself. Once the design is ready, the machine will let you know. It'll beep, I believe, like four times. And then you can insert your next shirt. I always like to have my shirts, the next shirt, hooped and ready to go. So you can just insert it and click start, especially if you're doing the same exact design or change out the design. And then um, start the next shirt. But then you should have something that looks like this. But yeah, guys, if you guys have any questions about um, a Recoma embroidery machine, again, I have a link down below. You can ask them any questions. They can answer whatever question you may have, whatever you question you may have about this video, any steps that I have um, may have missed. They are the best. So yeah, and they also have videos, very, very detailed videos on this kind of stuff too, like threading the machine. But yeah, guys this is it so let's get into the fun stuff let's talk about this giveaway so as you guys know we reached 10,000 subscribers and it is so excited it is so exciting i'm so so happy i cannot wait to give this away but i want to have the giveaway open for the full month to allow everybody to enter because i know some people watch this later or you know just i just want to give everybody a chance and enough time to enter so the way that you enter is basically you just have to be subscribed to my channel and my mom's channel her channel is Xiomara Cisneros i'll leave it linked down below as well and basically just leave a comment below on what your small business goals are and make sure to include your email with your comment so i can contact you if you win Remember, you guys are winning a Cricut and a heat press. That way you guys can start your business or help with your business. Or, you know, if you guys already have a Cricut then and you win, you might get another one. So make sure to do all of those things, which I think are pretty easy. <laughs> but yeah, the giveaway will end on May 10th. And yeah, guys, I really hope that you enjoyed this video and I can't wait to pick a winner. I'm so excited to send it to you guys. What I'll probably do is just order it and ship it directly to you. I feel like that might be better than um, ordering it to my house and then shipping it over to you guys. I think it's just better if I order it directly from the websites and ship it to you guys. So yeah, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Like this video if you enjoyed it. And yeah, I will see you guys later. Bye.